Introducing the all new 54 watches, 62 MAS homage. And this one is the latest version. They have been listening to the fans. The loom has changed from C3 to C1. So it is about three times weaker loom, but the loom now looks white. Kind of like how the 62 looked when it came out of factory. However, when the real 62 MAS aged, the loom turned green. Unless you are lucky enough to have one of the rare Dyni produced 62 MASs where the loom aged into a nice creamy patina. So I'm not so sure about that change. I think I prefer green loom to represent an aged SUA 62 MAS. The second update is the bezel insert. It used to be aluminum, now ceramic. I prefer aluminum, of course, but I've spoken to 54 and they said you can ask for aluminum still. So that's a good thing. If you love aluminum and the original look like me, then you can still order it. However, the ceramic looks great now because the numerals are now silver instead of white. So it looks a little bit more elevated, a little bit more premium here instead of that flat white look of the previous generation. And the final update is the Rehot. It used to be brushed and now it is proper and it's high polish. Big fan of that change. Now that you know the updates, let me quickly talk about 54 watches. They were started by a Seiko enthusiast. They are under the Legend Watch umbrella. It is a big factory in Asia and they make OEM cases and other watch parts for major OEMs. One major Japanese company you all love, one major German company many people love. So they're definitely capable of producing a quality timepiece because they do make OEM level products for other companies. They also manufacture cases for many big micro brands. With all that being said, my bezel is a hair to the left. Now let's have a listen. The coin edge bezel is easy to grip and operate. It is light and airy, the best way to describe it. All right, and it does settle back into position. Now let's check out the dimensions. 37 millimeter case, but the bezel is 38. It overhangs by half a mil on each side. We got a thickness of 13.8. That's a little tall, but this one has a top hat crystal. But you know what? It's a little bit strange. It doesn't look like a top hat. It looks kind of flat. So you do get the distortion, but without the added height. We have drilled lugs and a lug to lug of 46 millimeters, just like the SKX. So very compact lug to lug. It's a sweet spot mid size diver for sure. Now the dial in hands, we have a gorgeous gray sunray dial, just like the original and bold square easy to read applied indices and the loom is applied very evenly okay you can tell 54 watches has been doing this for a while 20 mil lug width and the strap tapers down to 18 it is a tropic strap and it's very smooth on the inside the case back has some kind of a boat it looks like or a wave Looks pretty good. No complaints about the case back. We have a screw down crown that screws down very nice, giving the watch 100 meters of water resistance, 50 less than the original. However, if you get the flat crystal, the water resistance goes up to 200 meters. Okay. And the flat crystal is also cheaper coming in at 269 USD, while the top hat version comes in at 319 USD. I would skip the top hat. It's hardly a top hat. You just get a little bit of distortion and it doesn't stick out nicely like a top hat. So save your money and get the flat. Now the hands are 62 MAS style, but they are painted black. I find that a little bit confusing. I wish it was silver. It, it makes it a little bit hard to read. And that second hand loom pip, it's a rectangle loom pip, just like the original, but it's very tiny on this one. I think they need to increase the size of the loom on the second hand for sure and make the hands silver on the next version. Good news if you don't like straps, 54 watches is making a bracelet for this watch. Okay, and they asked me to ask the fans, what kind of bracelet do you want? The top runner right now is an H-link female end link fitted bracelet. Comment down below because 54 watches is definitely going to be reading your comments on what style bracelet you want. Okay, we are gonna do the weight, 82 grams. Okay, very nice. The movement is 
of course, the NH35 Hack Henwine Automatic 21.6 VPH Low Beat, 24 joules and 42 hours of power reserve. But let's look at the rate. Hmm, error is a bit high, 0 0.4. Like that to be a little bit lower. Amplitude decent, 269. Now let's look at the rate, 15, 14, 12. And the fourth and final round, 12. Okay, we are gonna do 12 down to see how is this watch gonna perform on your wrist. And the beat error got better, which usually it gets worse when we do 12 down. But it was kind of really bad before <laughs> at 0.4. So now 0.1, much better. The line is cleaner, but the amplitude took a big hit. 240. Now let's look at that rate. 16, 15, 15. Uh oh, 13. Let's ignore the first one. And if we can get 12, <laughs> then it's pretty consistent from dial up to 12 down. And the fourth and final round, ignoring the first, 13. All right. Oh, just sw switched to 12. Okay. There is the loom shot, and it is that C1 loom. So it's a little bit weak, but it should last pretty long. Just in a dimmer state. And the loom pip looks brighter. Interesting. Okay. For example, let me pull out my SKX and there you can see the difference right there. Seiko loom is about C3X1 level in strength, but uh, it's thinly applied in the SKX. Here is deeply filled C1. So the loom isn't the greatest. Every now and then a watch comes along and it just makes an impact. The Rolex Submariner for one, that's why it's highly copied another one the 62 mas that's why there's so many mods clones etc it's an icon and this one 37 mil it gives us the closest size to the original let me know your thoughts down below on this homage and guys if you're still here remember to subscribe like the video and watch the videos on the right of your screen right now and i'll see you in the next one